wanting to swap a V8 in any car, more specifically in LS, and you came across this video, you are in luck. Today I want to go over everything that you're going to need to do to make an LS run in any car, and by the end of this video you are going to know exactly how to do it. In theory. I think so. Yeah. And now, you're watching the Who Doesn't Love a Prior to, Present, and Post Shower Beer channel Perfect. of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another video, or if this is the first video that you have ever seen, let me give you some background information. So this car right here is a 1988 Honda Accord. This is a LS1 out of a 2004 GTO, and we got it running before, but I went through and I rebuilt it. So the motor's completely rebuilt, well, completely besides the bottom end, Texas speed cam, head work, different fuel rails, just a couple different things to wake the motor up just a little bit. So what I wanna focus on right now is getting the motor to fire up for the first time after the rebuild. And I wanna walk you through exactly what it's going to take to make this motor fire up. And that's exactly the same thing that you would need to do on your car. And that's all wiring stuff anyways. So with this car, with this motor, with this setup, I'm actually using the Holly Terminator X management system. And there's a million reasons why this is more efficient to do as opposed to getting your OEM computer chipped and tuned and then stripping down the harness. This kit is a thousand dollars and that's everything that you're gonna need. It includes a little LCD touch screen so that way you can set up all your tuning. It will run right out the box perfectly without any issues and there's all kinds of directions but the reason why I want to make this video for you is because not everybody likes to go through directions but if you buy the kit every single thing that you're going to need to do is in this pamphlet. Besides the pamphlet, let me just let you know what you do have to do. So with the Holly Terminator X, it comes with the ECU and it comes with the wire harness. That wire harness is just for the motor. It doesn't have anything to do with her. It doesn't have anything to do with the transmission. So you just got to plug in all the plugs to the corresponding sockets. And then you're just going to have a couple extra inputs. With those inputs, what they are and what else you're going to need to do. Well, let me write that down for you. So we have this little list going and this is going to be the inputs for the ECU and I just wanted to emphasize really quick, this is only to make the motor fire up. When you're doing your final install, it's going to be a little bit different. So the first wire out of the Holly Terminator, we have the solid red wire and that wire, that's just going to be your constant 12 volts. So just hook that wire right up to the battery. The next wire that we have is the red and white and that's for your switch 12 volts. So as you wire up your system for the final time, this is going to be so your ECU can come on once you switch it on with your key or with whatever switch you have. So that switch 12 volts just for us to start up needs to be on a 12 volt as well or to the battery. But again, as you're doing it for the final time, it's going to be a little bit different. And then we just have two grounds and that's it. So the Holly Terminator has just those wires. But that's not all, you still need to connect two more wires. So those other two are the starter wire and that wire is going to be when you want it to start, you gotta turn the starter on, but then you gotta pull that off of the battery so that way the starter doesn't stay spinning. And then also a wire for your fuel pump and the ground for the fuel pump. And that's all you need to make an LS fire up using a Holly Terminator. So that little list will make your motor fire up, but keep in mind your alternator is not going to be plugged in, so you still gotta do wiring for that and none of your belts need to be on. You don't even need to have any coolant in the motor, although I would recommend it. But again, if you just rebuilt it or you're just slapping it in the car and you wanna make sure it will fire up, let it run for 10 seconds, then you'll be fine. The main purpose of this, again, is to make sure the motor will fire, not for final wiring. So if you've been keeping up with the project, what I've done thus far since the last video, is I got some of these radiator hoses figured out. We have the upper one and the lower one, and this is kind of challenging. You just gotta go inside the parts store, take some measurements and get something that's gonna fit. Because this is so one-off, they're not gonna have anything on the shelf that will fit. If you ask them, you actually just have to go look. And also I got some of my wiring torn down, figured out, and then reworked.
so we got that one harness completely pulled apart now that harness used to go from the alternator and starter over to the fuse box which was right in this area but we want all of that inside the car now so what we had to do and the reason why we pulled it apart is because we wanted to completely rework it make it nice and neat look good and go to where we want it as opposed to the fuse box and the engine bay that's all going to be on the passenger side so we kind of separated them so that way they can just run right along with each other but the alternator one needed to be a lot longer the starter one didn't need to be as long so if you see the alternator one runs right here and it runs all through and then it goes through the firewall down in the corner and then the starter one is actually right here i wanted to show you how this looks so this goes to the starter and now this entire length has this nice plastic shield on it the braided plastic shield but from here to there this is actually going to be running behind the header so it's going to be inside of the firewall then it's going to come through this is actually plastic and heat wrap so we're going to have the heat protection that's going to be nice and good and then there's also heat shrink on the end right here so that's never going to come apart so that's going to sit at the starter everywhere where it's heated or protected is going to be by the header right at that piece right there is where it goes through the firewall Alright, so coming into the car, we just have a mess. Well, it's not a mess, it's just all mock up. So the ECU is right here. These two plugs, that's for the main harness to the motor. This is your power harness. So this goes over there to a distribution block. That distribution block will come right over to the battery. And then there's the constant 12 and switch 12. And if you can see right down there, that orange tape, that's for the starter. So once we're ready to go, just touch that on the distribution block. Once it's fired up, you gotta let go. So if we just have this right here sitting waiting, I'm gonna take this and then the fuel pump is that purple wire. So we have this that I'm gonna plug in. That's sitting on there right now. ECU came on. This is firing up. Now, when you're doing this for the first time, you gotta go through the whole startup wizard and set up all your parameters on how big your motor is, whether you have a turbo, whether you're going nitrous or anything at all. Just go through, follow the menu, and it'll bring you to this little display. So right now, these are just everything that I wanna see. None of the fans are hooked up. The main thing I wanna focus on is that the motor has oil pressure. I don't know why it's saying negative one right now, but we'll see. RPMs are off, so I guess the next thing we gotta do now is hook up the fuel pump. So fuel pump came on, we can hear it. ECU's on, this is on, everything is looking good, so I guess let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, so we just have the starter wire right here, and again, as soon as it fires up, I just gotta pull it off. The main thing that I wanna look for is that we have oil pressure, and that's down right there, you can see it in red. So for the first time, if you don't have any oil pressure, you did something wrong, and also it could take a couple seconds. If you don't see any oil pressure right away, don't be alarmed, but if you see zero oil pressure after 15 seconds or so, you did something wrong. So I guess let's go for it. Have my gas right here that I can control, and let's do it. <laughs> I forgot to plug in my cooler, but... And boy, she's alive! That's crazy. Okay, I, I guess we're gonna go ahead and shut it off. There we go, she's alive, first time. And like I said, the power steering fluid, that was all over the front because I put the belt on and I didn't plug in the whole cooler out front. So we just shot a little bit of fluid out there. And that's 
all good because we know it's working. The belt's on, it's spinning the power steering pump just like it should. A little bit of smoke coming off the headers, but that's to be expected after you're handling the headers. And also with them being heat wrapped, I read when I bought them that they gotta kinda steam up a little bit or they gotta kinda smoke off. And dude, this thing, this thing fires up and it sounds nasty. All right, so it is fired up. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna let the car run for a good 15, 20 minutes, come up to temp, but that involves cooling and I still have a couple ends and fittings that I gotta get figured out. Well, I just gotta actually buy them for my expansion tank, then I can do all my coolant, then we can let it come up to temperature. But the motor runs, that's what we wanted to accomplish and I hope this helps you get your motor running or I hope this entertains you to just watch my 1988 Honda Accord fire up for the first time after the rebuild, looking super nice, super clean, super excited. And I just came over here on Sunday to get it fired up for you guys. We've been working like crazy. I know you might not see it in the video, but trust me, if you've ever built a car, you know that it takes a long time. Just the radiator hoses alone, for example, take some figuring out. You gotta measure them, you gotta get the right length, you gotta go to the store, figure out which ones you need. You can't just tell them which ones you're gonna need. And there's a bunch of stuff. And also I wanted to mention right now on the site, the mystery pack, dude, you guys killed it on the mystery pack. There's a couple sizes left. So if you hit the link down in the description below, that's two shirts, three stickers, five items, $30. I don't know how many sizes are there, but go check it out and see if your size is there. Let me know what you think. Are you hyped that the 1988 Accord Betty White fired up for the first time after being rebuilt? It sounds phenomenal. Let me know what you think about it. That's going to be it for this one, you guys. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.